you'll be turning your Bibles to the second chapter of James. <clears throat> Thank the Lord for letting us all be together this morning. And, uh, we hope that we can be a blessing to uh, each one here this morning as we read God's Word. And maybe if we make a, a few comments on the on the Scripture this morning. We, uh, Ask that you push for our word for our force because our, our members and all is not uh, as good as it used to be. And uh, sometimes I make notes and I forget to see the notes. So uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's, it, it gets uh, different sometimes. But anyway, in the second chapter of the book of James, in chapter chapter two, verse one. Notice how he says this. All starting off, my brethren, talking to those that are saved, <clears throat> have not the faith of the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of glory now he says have not the faith now he is not saying that they don't have faith but he's calling them brethren and he's warning them of having something else to go along with this faith notice he says my brethren have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ the, the Lord of glory with respect to persons now it might be that you can use this as an example it's just like uh, having a clear glass of water and dropping dirt in it then you you uh, you make the whole thing cloudy and what he's saying is here this respect of person is a sin mm -hmm. and uh brethren of the, of the lord the children of the lord don't need to have respect to persons and they need to control that thing and they need to uh, 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 thank the Lord and pray that they won't have because listen it's so easy it's very easy to uh, see a fault mm -hmm. with, a, with a, a person or with a brother as far as that goes but here James is warning them against this and he's saying here that uh, in verse 2 for if they're coming to you in the assembly a man with a gold ring and in goodly apparel and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment now here comes the two people that uh might be one of them might be a help to this person that's going to have respect to the poor man because listen one of them is has got the gold and he's got the money and he's got this and he's got that and he has respect to him now notice what he says in verse 3, And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Set thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand there, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. And I, I don't know for sure what the the meaning of this was that James had about the footstool, but I'm, I'm thinking that uh, any way that that you look at it, the man that is doing the guiding of the rich and the poor, he is belittling the poor man, and he is right. he is saying to him, "You can get over here somewhere uh, where people can't see you." But uh, I want this this man with all the apparel to uh, 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 to be seen, and I want to be in good standing with him. And uh, that is the wrong thing to do, because listen. Uh, we'll see here just in a minute about what happens to those that have money uh, and how that they will be offended uh, with other people that uh, don't have as much as they do. Now notice here. In verse 4, Are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Now it, it it that's what it says evil thoughts because you're having this you're having this difference in your mind about who is good and who is bad which is called a type of judging and he says you're partial to that one that's got the gold. Hearken, my my beloved brother, hath not God chosen the poor Amen. of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which He hath promised to them that love Him. So now, here James is saying, and, and if you wanted to sometimes turn over and read Proverbs uh, and 8, it tells about that, that Jesus said, or that 
that the the the, uh, uh, the writer says there that I love them that love me, mm -hmm. and that's that's Jesus or uh, what Jesus would say. But anyway, notice uh, he says, "Do not rich men oppress you." Now this is this is the brethren that has recognized this rich man and what he's what he why he is re, uh, recognizing is because he's got he's got money and he's got things that worldly things that this guy could use and if he wanted to borrow or or try to get him he, he, he might stand a better chance this poor guy down here he ain't got nothing mm -hmm. and he don't care anything about it so we see here that this man that that has this uh, partiality to this rich man uh, notice what what he says here in verse 6 after he says uh, in verse 5 hearken my brother hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him now notice but ye have despised the poor do not rich men now here's here's the thing do not rich men oppress you. That's the one that was uh, had a partiality for this rich man. And he thought he'd get something out of it. But he says here, Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat. In other words, uh, they don't. The, the rich man don't care anything about nobody but his worldly possessions. Right. And if, if this guy that's uh, having this partiality gets uh, chooses him and he gets in his way, listen, he'll bring him before the law. Mm -hmm. He don't care anything. But this is this is what uh, James is upset about, and all of this. And this is why that uh, it's it's so wrong for us uh, to to have this uh, attitude towards people. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way you look at uh, at the law of God. Now he did not have no he did have no choice of or no partiality toward. He loved us all. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. Amen. The thing of it is, God chose who He would have of that. Right. But there was no there was no little I and big you or you little you and I big guy. Whatever there was nothing like this. So we see here that. Uh, this man here, he says, and James said here, well, this man will despise you even though you have uh, put him first, put him in a high place and all this. He still looks down on you. So I want to I want to read you something this morning again, and it's between the Pharisee and the, pub, or the publican in verse uh, in, in Luke 18. If you if you turn with me there, or just uh, listen to me as I try to read. Luke 18 and uh, verse 10, I think. Yeah. And you're familiar with this, but I want to read it to you anyway because this is this brings out the point that I want to put to you. In verse 10 of chapter 18 of the book of Luke, two men went up into the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Exhort, extortion, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. What was he doing? He's judging. <laughs> He's judging, and this this is this is connected with this uh, thing here of respect. He had no respect for this man. He was over there, and he wasn't doing anything to harm him. And and he said the man did not even open his mouth. But this Pharisee come up with all of this stuff and, and, and said, hey, I'm not like him. I'm, I'm, I'm good. And, and calling all of the things that he's done, he says, here I fast, in verse 12, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing off, afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me. Jesus says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified Amen. rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Amen. It takes a humble spirit sometimes uh, not for to, to show uh, not to show any disrespect to, any, to a person, and and, and you know, 
Uh, sometimes you know that the fruit that they're bearing and the things that they're saying and the things that they're doing uh, is not uh, uh, how that you believe. But the thing of it is, uh, we need to we need to think about our condition, how we were when we were out in sin and away from and didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sin, how that He how He died for us, how He chose us, and uh, uh, I think that we have a different slant mm -hmm. on on the things that we think about and the things that we say about if we can just only keep this little this little tongue this right on hell afar, you know, keep it quiet. Now again, I would that you would turn to Jeremiah 18. I'm going to read just one other scripture here for you. Uh, on this respect. Jeremiah 18 and verse 1. And we have uh, heard this read a few times. and uh, But it, it's got a good meaning and it, it, it kind of backs up the, uh, the respect of persons. But in Jeremiah 18 verse 1, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. In other words, he was there, he had that ball of clay, and he was making this, he was working, working this clay. And he says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred. Now here we are, that's us. That's us before we knew the Lord. That's, that's us before Jesus Christ uh, came and died on the cross of, of Calvary for us. We were marred, unrecognizable, didn't know the Lord. We were in that condition. Amen. Now notice. Then, the, uh, and the vessel that he made was marred in the hand and the part. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. And he's talking about the house of Israel, but I'm talking about us this morning and using this. And listen, this ought to be our desire this morning that when we have this problem that the Lord through the Holy Spirit might speak to our heart. He might reach down and reshape us a little bit and get this old wicked town kind of calm down. Amen. Or that we could, we, could, we could appreciate instead of, uh, uh, of slander the person that we're talking about. Because listen, he's God's. He's God's. Uh, God made him. Amen. And uh, we we don't need to we don't need to show disrespect to any human being because in, in, in that sense and listen I, I'm not saying hey that you can just let them walk all over you or you can do this and do that but listen there's times come when when we need to keep our mouth shut right and we need to uh, just pray for the person because. <coughs> Uh, a lot of times we don't know what's going on in our life and we don't know what God's got planned for them and we don't know what God's planned for us as either. So uh, these are some of the things that we need to think about when we, when we uh, uh, have this to happen to us. Now, i got another uh, thing here in Proverbs right over from that. If you want to just listen. In Proverbs 8, and it's just a very short verse. In 17, he says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. And so we're seeing this morning that Jesus loves us all. God loves us all. And listen, uh, you know, you say, well, what about those that never, never serve Him? Hey, that's between them and the Lord. He is, he is the one that has the say over it. But I'm saying this this morning that Jesus Christ set an example when he was here upon this earth, and you read, you read all of your Bible and all the red writings and all of this and the designation that Jesus Christ was speaking these words. Listen, he did not, he did not show disrespect. He he used the truth with them, even to the point that when the devil was tempting him, did he use did he did he use anything? He used the word of God. Amen. 
And he, he finally said, get thee behind me, Satan. And so listen, that's, that's the thing that we uh, this morning need to think about is the, uh, the, the opportunities that we have instead of showing disrespect, we can be a witness to them. We can, and we can even to the point of asking, hey, uh, could I read to you some in the Bible about what you're saying or what, what's going on in your life and help them in that way. Mm -hmm. But no, if you, if you let this tongue just keep on going, it'll get you farther and farther and farther away. Right. Plus, you're getting in trouble with God. Because listen, uh, you, your sins will find you out. Amen. And uh, one of these days, uh, something will uh, bring to your mind. Now listen, do you remember the time that you uh, uh, disrespected this person? And it's the same way here with this right here when he's, when he's talking about this man that come in with this gold apparel on and all this. Listen, he don't care anything about nothing but worldly, worldly goods. And that's the reason why that... Uh, uh, we could look at it in this respect that the poor, the poor is blessed because they are poor. Because listen, there's no place, there's nothing that they, there's nothing that they can do but go to the Lord and and seek His leadership and ask Him them to help Him to help them because uh, they haven't got this problem of worrying about their bank account or who's going to break into their house and steal what they've got or uh, being rude and. and but they got the Lord to look to. And uh, so this morning, these are some of the things that uh, I, I got out of this. But notice we'll get on just a little bit more in our lesson back in uh, James 2. Uh, in verse 7, I believe it is. Do, uh, do, they, do, they, do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? And we this morning are called God. We call our, our, our Lord and Savior God, and, and that's, that's who we call upon when we need something. And it says here, do they not blaspheme Him? And so, why, why, would, I, why would I want to uh, disrespect a person that is poor and needs help and is trying to serve God and set my praises on this guy over here that would put me in jail he would he would have anything that he could do he, he would have me done he would have it done to me and so if i if i need to if i need to praise anybody i don't need to praise that gold and that worldly thing but i need to, to reach down here with this guy and give him a hand and help him and encourage him because listen he is in the will of god more so than this person right is. god says i love the poor and, and, uh, and, of course, being poor don't make you saved. But the thing of it is, he's talking about poor in spirit. I want to, uh, I got some uh, scripture over here I want to read if I think, if I can think about it. And uh, it's in Matthew, I believe it is, if I can find it. Uh, I think I'm, uh, Matthew 5, I believe it is, yeah. Matthew 5. And verse 1. Matthew 5, verse 1. <clears throat> verse 1 says you know, of Matthew 5 and he seeing the multitude he went up into the mountain and when he was set his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in our spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And he said also, Blessed are they when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, did it say there anywhere, blessed are the rich? I don't see it. Right. Because, listen, the rich, it says, hardly can a rich man enter the kingdom of heaven. 
And it, it's easier, I believe it says in one place, sir, for a, go, a camel to go through the eye of a needle uh, than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom. But here he says in verse 12, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which are which were before you. Right. And he goes on to tell them, tell us, tell us what we are. We are the salt of the earth. We are the salt. And listen, it says, speaks in there about losing its saltiness. These things that we're talking about this morning, uh, uh, disrespect to the poor because they're poor and disrespect because they're not got them. Uh, it's the guy has gay clothing and things of this nature. Listen, that's how sometimes the saltiness is, is it gets lost. Right. And so here, back in our lesson again, now I'll quit running you all over. But he says, uh, uh, notice here, do, do not they blaspheme, in verse 7, that worthy name by which ye are called. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Now you know Jesus told them that. He said, uh, and he said, one of them asked him, well, who is my neighbor? And he gave them an example. Uh, and uh, here he, he says to us, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye, shall, ye, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. So if you, if you have respect to persons, here's what you need to do. You need to ask the Lord to forgive you. Amen. You need to get it out of your system. You need to, you need to uh, uh, and if, you, if that tongue wants to rattle, you need to bite it. And you need to hold it off and say, Lord, forgive me for even thinking such a thing. Because here it says you commit sin. And people, I, I, know, I know I commit sins. I know I have thoughts and things like this. And, but listen, this is one that you do that you can prevent. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, 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 you can openly uh, train yourself not to, not to say things at least. You may have thoughts. But listen, you can keep your mouth shut because uh, the one that you talk to, you may you may cause him to go farther astray than you went. Right. And the first thing you know, he's out there uh, doing this and doing this and doing this, and the sin's piling up on him. So he says here, uh, if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's in bad shape. He's guilty of it all. Mm -hmm. And that, that means me and you this morning, if we if we sin willfully like this and do these things and and know now that it's it's a sin to do it, and we do it, listen, we're guilty of of everything that we try not to do. Because listen, we're we're guilty of sin, and, and 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 you know that's that's where we get in trouble, mm -hmm. deep deep trouble. Because uh, we're guilty of more things than we think we are, and we think, well, I'm trying to do the best I can, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and you call over a hundred things. But listen, you've lost it all. You're guilty of everything if you do this one sin, mm -hmm. and and I'm sure. That respect is is just one of the things that will qualify you for to be guilty of them all, because uh, 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 a sin is a sin. But notice, for who who uh, for in verse eleven, for he that saith do not com for he that saith do not commit adultery, said also do not kill. No, if thou committest no adultery, yet if thou kill. Thou art become a transgressor of the law. And of course, we know this morning that we're not under the law. But listen, the law is a schoolmaster, was a schoolmaster, still is. And listen, we can, we can know by this, the things that we can't do. And, and, and adultery and killing is two of them right here. And respect is another one. So listen, uh, he's, he's using the law, James is, but it, it refers to us that are under grace also. Because uh, these things here, 
you can find in other scriptures where that Jesus says you shouldn't do these things. And if you do these things right here, then hey, you've got to get, for, get forgiveness from all because you're guilty. You're, I mean, you, you make the whole lump. Right. You make the whole lump sinful. So, so verse 12 says, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgments. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute or day of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, ye be ye warned and filled. Be ye warm and filled. Notwithstanding, ye gave them not those things which are needful to be the body that doeth it, what doth it profit? Even even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yet a man say, may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Amen. And, and, and so, uh, I just read that. It, it, it's, 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 still, it's still pertaining to this, this thing of, of, of works and respect and, and all this. But listen, it's something this morning that, that we are often... Uh, we're often confronted with, mm. and that, that that's people that's people that they don't love the Lord. Uh, they don't uh, they don't care about they don't care about the the, the church uh, as a as a church. They don't care about these things. But listen, we need to keep this in mind. We were there one time, mm -hmm. and Amen. listen, we were there. And all we can do, all we can do this morning, and all we can say is, Lord, help that person. Uh, and, and, and that's it. Because uh, uh, the Bible says not to dis disrespect him in that way. And so, and of course, I know there's, there's times come when you have to do these things and, and say things to people. But listen, uh, you, 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 can, you can try to do it with a heart. Amen. And, 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 and tell the Lord, hey, I want to pray for that person because I was there once myself, and I know what I know what it's all about. And and I hope that, that these things that I've said to you and 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 all will will, uh, will help you to think about these things and and just uh, just kind of click every once in a while when you when something like this comes up, and uh, you know because uh, it don't it don't help things a bit to uh, say anything or slander anybody. It don't help things. Right. It just hurts you a little bit more because you're seeing it again. So I thank you this morning for listening to this, and I hope it's been a help to you in some way. Thank you all.